so let's go forward. So we were saying, as we were saying that, that Jeshurun, Moses, when this verse, Exodus 18, 13, most have overlooked this particular verse. They just read it as, okay, Moses sat to judge the people, and his Ethiopian father-in-law is going to give him some advice about order, about dealing with the fears of the Beit Israel more efficiently. And people think, well, it's just some advice that he gives. But something very significant here as we, as we study it. When Moses sat to judge, he sat on the square. He sat on the square. You understand? He sat on justice and righteousness. You understand? In this order of fit, of pita. You understand? Of fit, of pita. As an Afro Shemite, as an Ethiopian Hebrew himself, and being related to. Jethro married into this high priest, the high priest Jethro's family married his daughter Sipara or Zipporah. Now, he sits to judge. See, this one verse needs to first of all be understood. Verse 13 needs to be better overstood. Because if it's not overstood, the whole context of what follows is not going to be very clear. So that needs to be understood firstly and foremostly. And this is why, and this is one of the reasons why we are spending so much time on this one area. First of all, Moses sitting to judge. Because otherwise, if you don't understand this, you're not going to understand Jeshurun in Deuteronomy chapter 33. And what it means when it says that Moses, he sat as king. Let's, let us um let us document this. Let us document this for you. Let us go to remember we're still in Exodus 18, but we're going to go to Exodus chapter, I mean Deuteronomy chapter 33 and return to Exodus 18 momentarily. So let's go to Deuteronomy 3:3 3, 3 for a moment. In Deuteronomy 3:3, 3, 3, which is basically coming to the end of Moses's ministry 33 and here we have the blessing of the tribes the blessing of the 12 tribes of the beta israel and we're going to just begin from verse 1 let's begin from verse 1 it says and this is the barakat this is the blessing wherewith moses musa the head of the fraternal order of the lewawian the man of God, of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, the true God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. He blessed them before his death. And he said, Yahweh came from Sina, that Yahweh came from that flat top mountain that's like Debrodamo. He came from Sina, from Sinai and rose from Seir to them. And he shined forth from Mount Paran, Faran, Rastafari, from Mount Paran. And he came with 10,000 of saints, of Kedusan, of holy ones, 10,000 of ones who were set apart, just like the Nazarite vow is a vow of setting apart, and that makes one a saint or kedus, a holy one. does not mean that they are perfect, but they are in the school of perfection, being a kedus. does not mean that you are without any fault, but you are in a school of perfection. You're in a school of being set apart. You are learning, or you should be, and growing. You understand? Um, it says, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. From his what? From his right hand, from his yod, his right hand, came, went a, a fiery law. His right hand, a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. They sat at his feet because he sat on the square. 
Mm -hmm. He sat to judge, Exodus 18, 13. Yea, he loved the people. All his son are in his hand. And they sat down at his feet. Everyone shall receive. That's a very important word, brothers and sisters. The word receive in the Ethiopic is kebelet. And kebelet, you might know it as Kabbalah. Kebelet is also called and known as Kabbalah. So when it says, and everyone shall receive, show Kabbalah, as when he blew the Holy Spirit upon them, Yeshua, he said, receive Kabbalah, the Holy Spirit. Receive of thy words. He says, he says his words are spirit. So he blew on them. Yeshua blew on them. The Moshiach blew on them and said, receive Kabbalah, Kabbalah. And Christ says, if you can receive this, because he says not all can receive this. He said not all can Kabbalah it, but if you can receive it. It says Moses commanded us a law. He commanded us a Torah. He commanded us the Torah. This is what we're studying, what he commanded us, a law. Even the inheritance, notice how significant this is. This is inheritance. It's like when the Federation speaks of our divine heritage. This is the root. This is, this is it right here. For my part, I glory in the Bible, say it's the king of kings, Kedamawi Haile Selassie. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So even the inheritance of the congregation of Yaakov, of the society of Jacob, the society of Yaakov, and he was what? King. Who? Speaking about Moses. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob, verse 5, and he was king in Jeshurun, which some translates that to mean the upright one, the upright one, and how you see the Osar pictured as standing upright. You understand? He was the upright one. You understand? In character. You understand? In his stance, in, in righteousness, in that ma'at, in that truth, in that justice. You understand? When the heads of the people, the rasoch, when the rasoch, the heads of the people and the tribes were gathered together. So now what we're connecting right here is Deuteronomy chapter 33, mainly verse 5, where it says that Moses was king. He was a, uh, a melech. You understand? He was a nigush. He was a king, and he sat to judge. You understand? And notice how the blessing of the tribes that we, that we have here in Deuteronomy chapter 33, and the context of it. You understand? He loved the people, all his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law, the Torah, even the inheritance. So the law is the inheritance, and the law, Torah, is that key for us in the inheritance. And one proof of this, even in New Testament, because there's some counterfeit Christians, so-called Christian and churches who will say that the law has been done away with, that we're no longer under the law because of Christ. We're not under the law. The law has been done away with, as to imply that the commandments and that the Old Testament is no longer in effect. But what rebukes them and reproves them is the witness of our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach, Jesus Christos. When he himself, even in Luke's gospel, we touched on this um, previously already, when in Luke's gospel on the Emmaus road, he asked them, like, 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 why are you so slow? I mean, why are you so slow to get this? And then he begins to, to open their, their, their eyes, their hearts, and their minds by going through Torah, the law of Moses, the Psalms of David, the prophets. So we find that Christ, after the resurrection, 
in order to perfect his disciples. He focused on Torah. He focused on the Psalms of David. He focused on the prophets, explaining all of those things concerning him because they were so sad after the crucifixion because according to what they knew, the limitation of what they knew, they didn't know anything about that the Messiah, Christ, would be crucified, and, and they thought that redemption, that Israel would be redeemed at this time. How is this happening? And so Christos, the Moshiach, Yehoshua, Adonenu, he explained to them, you understand, Torah, you understand, he explained to them the Psalms, he explained to them the prophets, those things concerning he himself. So this shows us that we are not able to fully receive Christ. You understand? If we are not also receiving the fullness of his instruction. And his instruction is that the law of Moses is important. That the prophets and the Psalms, all of the scriptures, as Edomawi Haile Selassie says, that the scriptures should not be cut into pieces. This means as we're studying the Bible, it is good for us to get into a study discipline and to also pray that we would have brothers and sisters around us that we can study and build and reason on. You know, one time Rastafari used to deal with groundation, where brothers and, and sisters would come together with their scriptures and other relevant documentation and would gather together and maybe have some Aishan, some some herbs, some food, and but we would reason on the Bible, you understand, would, would study and would grow. This is when Rastafari had a stronger foundation. This is when it was still a movement very vigorously and active in the pursuit of fulfilling on earth the will of the King of Kings and his Christ. We have fallen into an inertia. Rastafari has, it's a movement, yes, but the movement has become inert because of the lack of the living word, our divine heritage, the teaching of his majesty, we first must get informed, and then we can properly and rightly get involved according to our calling. This is key, brothers and sisters. This is the key. So here in verse 5 of Deuteronomy um, 33, where it says, And he was king in Jeshurun, when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. So let's return to, to 18 now, right? 18 and 13. And it says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Musa, by Moses, from morning to the evening. So they stood by him from, from morning unto the evening. Now, just a couple of more words on this square, this where Moses sat to judge, to render the 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 fitha negesht, you understand, to render this this law, you understand, this justice, the pata according to the Egyptic, you understand, pata, the fit according to the Ethiopic. You understand, which is that justice. He sat. What about this square? Well, this square is the seat of Osiris. Osar. This is the seat of Osar. Where? In the judgment hall. So now we we have this scene here in the scriptures that reminds us of something from Egypt. But then, no wonder, because Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the what? The Egypts, or the Egyptians, according to the King James interpretation, you understand, or translation. The wisdom of the Egypts is correct, but they say the Egyptians. And he was mighty in word and in deed. Why does the Bible remind us of that? Because it's giving us a key. It's saying that many will come along and misunderstand. You remember when Moses took his hand and he put it in his bosom and he brought it out and it was leprous 
You understand? It was white as snow, it was leprous. And then he put his hand in again, and it came out to his other flesh. Don't you understand what has gone on? Originally, it's black. Then it gets whitewashed. But then this is the time where it's going back in and it's coming out to its other or original flesh. That was a key sign that was given to Musa there. Not just for him, but for us at this time, at the end of this so-called world system the end of the so-called, quote, world, the Gentile world order. And this is where we're at in 2012. This is where we're at right now. And it's about that same judgment. So it was from which place all the judge, all are judged as to the past and must be found perfect before they could proceed further. So this is what Moses also symbolically is doing. You understand? According to his knowledge, according to his initiation. Remember, he was, he was learned in all the wisdom, and he was mighty in the execution of it. So it wasn't just like he, he was a scribe. He knew what was written, but he knew how to do it. So here we see in Exodus 18 and 13, Moses doing it. You understand? Know doing it. Doing what? Sitting on that seat of Yeshurun or Jeshurun or Sar. You understand? Know in the judgment hall from which place all are judged as to the past and must be found perfect before they could proceed further. Now, symbolically, therefore, it shows that it was first emblematically the seat for judging right from wrong, so to speak. So as an emblem, as a symbol, this is where Moses sat, as a symbol, you understand, know as a as a emblematic form to bring the material into per perfect form, to bring the material. Now, what was the material that Moses was dealing with? He was dealing with the hearts and minds of the Beta Israel, like every true preacher or proclaimer of the King of Kings' good news and the gospel, the true and eternal glorious gospel of our black Lord and Savior is also about. You understand? It is to bring the material into perfect form and to reject that which was not perfect. So now the standard of perfection is according to the master, not according to I and I, not according to us as disciples or as students or as the children, but it's according to the Abba. It's according to the Father. And it's through the Word now. The word, the sound, and the power, and the life, the liberty of the word, as Christ says, anyone that does the word will know of who the teachings are. You understand? Anyone who does the will, you understand, of I, Father, they will know of who the teaching is. So a lot of folks that act like the word is not true, they haven't done nothing. They haven't done jack. They don't know Jack. They don't know Yaakov. They don't know Jacob. Yovas. And to build on the square as a fourfold foundation is considered to build forever. So this is, this is the point that we're at in Exodus 18 and 13 where Moses sat to judge the people. From what? From morning until evening. All day. All day. Now Paul... He speaks as a mason, Hawaii Apollos, Paul in the scriptures, he speaks as a as a builder. You understand? A true divine builder. He even he even likens himself to be a, a master builder. Within the scriptures we have this concerning Hawaii Apollos. So he speaks as a master builder, you understand? And he makes Christos the Moshiach. You understand? Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, the chief cornerstone in that spiritual temple, in that building that is built it, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. Now, at that time, there was no... Jesus Christ in the sense of known in the world as such, but the key is uh, the Amen. You see, someone would say, like, 
what Dr. Ben says here, he says, but there was no God named Jesus Christ. At that time, no, not at that time, speaking about ancient Egypt, but there was the Amen. And Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, now gives us that key hint and connection. But there's more. There is more. So, when we now um, look into this a little bit more deeper, he goes on and says that we must date the origin of our ceremonies, so-called in Freemasonry, back to the time when the Egyptians had perfected their eschatology. That means they had perfected the spiritual application. They had gone from low degrees to high degrees, as it comes from heaven to earth, from low degrees to high degrees. And they had perfected their eschatology. In fact, it was and is their eschatology practiced in a dramatic form, the more so to impress upon the eye and those of the various degrees as they pass from the lower to the higher to instill in their minds the whole of the doctrines or the teachings of final things. This is why Yahweh, our Father, says to the Nabim or the prophets, he says in the latter days we would comprehend these things perfectly. And in these latter days and time as knowledge has gone to and fro and information has increased in this technological society that we're in, more and more we can see the hidden pieces of the puzzle coming together because now we're able to look and see the information and, 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 and the, the information is accessible. You understand? For many ages, much of this was inaccessible. Just like we have Bibles and we can freely read and study the Bible, in many other ages of human experience, the Bible was not so freely and easily accessible. So think of how, even in times, and especially in times like these, brothers and sisters, we're blessed. You understand? And that means if we have this opportunity, it is for a reason. And if we are called of him, then it's for a divine reason, our divine heritage, brothers and sisters. So these were the priests and learned men only who knew all things and the common herd of mankind or the cupped, the cup toach, those who are like the cattle, were never taught all the forms, ceremonies, and doctrines. This is much like what goes on religiously speaking. You know, the common folk they are not taught all the forms, what the forms mean, or the ceremonies, or the doctrines, and they considered to be the the sheeple. You know what I'm saying? That's where we get the sheep. You know what I'm saying? The sheeple, or the the cattle, or perhaps even the goats. The priests who formed a distinct brotherhood among themselves. You see.